the Modernism Trail of Katowice. Skyscraper number 15 and 17, Zwierki and Vigure Street. In 1935, it was one of the highest buildings in Europe. This is why Katowice was called Polish Chicago. Thanks to the steel structure, it was possible to erect 14 floors and three underground floors, a building that stands out for its time. Who ended up on postcard from Katowice. Symmetrical design with balcony, full balustrades, can impress with its momentum. What else is characteristics of the Silesian skyscraper? We will ask our guests, Ms. Barbara Zygmanska and Mr. Piotr Fuglevich, authors of Walking Guide of Katowice. Mr. Piotr, as usual, traditionally I'll ask you first, why and what is the characteristic of the skyscraper in Silesia? Mr. Piotr said, the skyscraper in Silesia is characterized by that. As you mentioned, it was for longer time until the Prudential built in Warsaw, the highest building in Poland and one of the highest in Europe. Katowice was called Polish Chicago, not because of this one altitude, but because of the pace of life. They developed very turbulently in the 1970s and 1860s, as well as the 1990s. Then there's the war, the crisis and so on. After the war, and after the crisis of the 1930s, Katowice has become really extremely dynamic and very rich city. By the way, they were also a city where there were 12 embassies and consulates. I mean consulates rather than embassies. They were a city where numerous cabarets and restaurants. Of course, they were also a city where charcoal was sold from wheelchairs. But it is also characterized by Chicago. The social stratification. Therefore, natural things by rail Katowice has become the most American Polish city. But the skyscraper itself, which I'm sure my colleague will mention in a moment, was created not only because that we were Chicago, but it was also created because that there was a crisis and a problem with the sale of steel. This building was sort of propaganda display, as they say today, opportunities of the Polish industry. Lecturer said, but also during its construction at the Rialto Cinema, the video is displayed talking about its creation, that is, skeletal iron construction, its principles and application. Residents of Katowice could also go to the cinema. And as you say, it was a huge event, Mr. Piotr said. The title of the film was almost identical to the title from one of the works of Stefan Brewer, who was the constructor of this building. Because of course, it was an event on our scale, unique. We had, yes, the Maheda mansions before that we've already talked about, which had skeletal structure, but it was a one-story building. And here we're talking about 14 high floors because they were not small floors in the mining area. There is no fitting under Anje, but here the whole earth is shaking. So in general, it was a very bold technical solution. Besides, Professor Brewer was a man about European fame or even world fame. This building was a subject of great pride and also part of this propaganda war between Poland and Germany. Germany at the time planned for the creation of the tri-city, Buthen, Hindenburg, Gleiwitz, that is, the three Polish cities today. The tri-city was supposed to be a counterweight for the growing Katowice agglomeration. In 1924, the neighboring communes, there was supposed to be the central square where a similar skyscraper was designed. Only the Germans never did. They did and we did, lecturer said. Lucky for you, Mr. Piotr said. Yeah, I'm fine, lecturer said. Referring to Professor Stanislav Breva, still the second architect, designer was Tadeusz Kozłowski. Mrs. Barbara, would you mind giving us a little bit of information about a silhouette? Ms. Barbara said, Tadeusz Kozłowski was an employee of the Silesian Department of Public Works of the Vavoidship Office. And at the same time, from 1931, he was a professor of the Silesian of Technical Scientific Institutes. And here you could digress again a lot about what they were Silesian technical scientific works. Namely, it was a high school, which was appointed by the Vavoid Silesian. 
In Silesia, after World War I, there was a lack of professionals. There was a lack of professionals, intermediate level, that is, masters and technicians. They, up until World War I, in industry, as masters, technicians, mainly Germans worked, who left after the division of Silesia, simply to the German side, because they could find work everywhere. There was a need for educated, capable youth, and for this purpose have also been established and built. From scratch, actually. Mr. Piot said, As a beautiful building and also a modernist, Miss Barbara said, Yes, as well as a beautiful modernist building. At today's Krushen Skiergo Street, constructed Silesian technical plants, he was also at UL Vojevudska, built a special residential house for professors of these establishments. It was also the first elevator in Silesia. They were employed there as teachers, the best professionals, Mr. Piot said. Kozlovsky designed the structure, the body. As we say, he also designed even the lettering of numbers on stairwells. And the designers, he's somebody, I mean, you can see him only during construction. Because then you can see that skeleton like it was in those Chicago movies from 10 to 20 years ago. Welded skeleton from our Silesian smelters here. Anyway, a few years later, he was too. A trace of that. Super Sami. Professor Brewer was here too. A designer unique at the time. Construction of the exhibition hall Super Sami today. Miss Barbara said, Such a curiosity about the Silesian building, Nyebotika. Because that's what the building was called. The building had an elevator. It had 14 floors, as well as being heated. There was also a common boiler room. It was done so that Mr. Conservator's elevators, as well as the smoker, got apartments on the top floor of this building. Mr. Piot said, There are these huts built on the roof. Lecturer said, Just jealous. Miss Barbara said, If the elevator was out of order, you had to walk to the 14th floor. Lecturer said, Each stick has two ends. Mr. Piot said, on the roof, there is also a terrace from which you can watch the nice panorama of Katowice. It was also consistent with the assumption of modernist architecture that there was a terrace and railings around. Lecturer said, Let's move on to our second location, that is, the garrison church at Skłodowska Street, Curie 20. As the name suggests, the church was erected for stationed in Katowice, the 23rd Infantry Division. Today, the parish belongs to one of the dean's office of the Air Force of the Ordinary of Fields of the Polish Army. Architects Leon Ditsdarma, Jerzy Zarzycki, who inspired by avant-garde European architecture, have taken care of this so that the temple fits nearly to its surroundings. In the years 1930 to 1931, it was the first Polish church in the style of modernism. And reaching back to its history, Mr. Piotr said, the story is related to Leon Ditz de Arma, Polish architect despite the foreign name, which he worked for the military. Ditz de Arma is the author of the current rectorate, the Academy of Fine Arts, once a garrison casino. This is in the vicinity where the 73rd Infantry Regiment was stationed. The regiment needed its own church for prestigious regions. The plot where this church is supposed to be put was very uncomfortable. The plot was trapezoidal and small. There were already buildings between the plots. On this irregular plot, the architect built a structure that fit between the buildings, and then he put up the beautiful bell tower, thanks to which the church took on an architectural character. Lecturer said, And Mrs. Barbara, what can you tell me about this style? Inside the church. Miss Barbara said, Inside the church, there are almost entirely its own original equipment. This is typical Art Deco, especially the main altar and the crucifix, which is found at the main altar. From the interwar period of the 1930s, there are also road stations of the cross. While polychromy comes from later years, because already from the 1960s, but it is also adapted to the style of the interior church. Lecturer said, Dear listeners, if you want to find out why Katowice was called Polish Chicago, we invite you to the Modernism Trail of Katowice. And to my guests, Miss Barbara, 
Zygmanska and Mr. Piotr Foglevich, authors of Walker in Katowice, I invite you to other podcasts about the cultural roots of Katowice. Thank you for today and goodbye. This project is funded by government budgets. The podcasts have been read by Braden Buddy.